As we feed our body with its daily nourishment, let us not forget that more importantly, we must feed our souls with the Word of God, the food for our souls. Be a part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. Subscribe, like, share, and tap the notification bell in order to be updated every time we have a new reflection for you. Come, let us partake of the food for our souls. My dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday we celebrate another very important feast in the church. That's why we call it as a solemnity. It is the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. And of course, we popularly call it as the Corpus Christi. Well, I say popularly called Corpus Christi because of the, if you listen to the name of the feast in English, it says the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. But in Latin, we say Corpus Christi. Of course, we know that literally in Latin, when you say corpus, it means the body. When you say Christi, it means of Christ. That's why literally it means the body of Christ. Perhaps those who have in time were coming to Mass and Mass was still in Latin. Remember in communion? That's what the priest says, corpus Christi. Corpus Christi. Because it literally means the body of Christ. But listen to the English name. The solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. That's why the English name is actually more complete. It tells us of the body and blood of Christ. And I'm sure without even studying, we know that the feast of the Corpus Christi is to highlight our belief, our doctrine in the Catholic Church, what we call as the real presence of Christ. That in the Eucharist, every time we celebrate the Mass, the bread and the wine are turned into the real body and blood of Christ. It is not just a symbol. It is a real body and blood of Christ. We call that in theology as the real presence of Christ. And don't think that our doctrine or teaching on the real presence of Christ is an invention of the church or perhaps a late development. Actually, it goes back to the very time of Jesus, from the very teaching of Jesus Christ himself. Go to the, of course, the best, the best part in the scriptures that you can go to and see the teaching of Jesus of, of his real presence in the Eucharist is found in the Gospel of St. John. Go, for example, in chapter 6. Very important. Remember in chapter 6, that's the story when Jesus, remember, Early in the morning, went down of the mountain. Remember, he asked his disciples to cross to the other side already. And he walked on the water early in the morning. And people during that time have been following the Lord. And since they were following the Lord, when they woke up in the morning, they could not find Jesus anymore. Why could they not find Jesus anymore? Because early in the morning, he walked on the water, remember? And what do you do? As I said, at 3 o'clock in the morning, snoring father. <laughs> so they did not see Jesus leave the place. That's when they, when they woke up, they could not find Jesus anymore. And so they were looking around, they could not find him. What they did was to take a boat and cross to the other side. When they got there, they found Jesus. And remember, they said, when did you get here? It's like we were looking for you there. When did you get here? And what was the answer of Jesus? Instead of answering their question, Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, you look for me not because you saw signs, that means they believe in the miracles that Jesus did. That they believe in him as the Messiah. He said, rather you look for me because I fed you. Remember, that event happened immediately after the feeding of the multitude. And then Jesus says, look not for the food that perishes, but for the bread that gives you eternal life. And then, that's chapter 6. And then he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Now imagine if you're one of the, those listening to Jesus and he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Even the phrase saying came down from heaven is already a big question mark for you. Why do you think? Come on. Before you really finally fall asleep. <laughs> Why do you think? For them to hear Jesus came down from heaven. Remember, they are neighbors. Okay? These are Jews. Okay? Countrymen that listens to him. 
So what do I mean? They practically know the family of Jesus. They know when he was born, where was he born. They know who's the mother, who's the father. How can you say you came down from heaven? Right? You did not come down from heaven. You're born here in your house. We know your house. And yet Jesus said, Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. All the more. How can you say that your flesh we shall eat? Oh, when the Jews heard that, actually, the disciples, when I say disciples, don't think only of the twelve. Remember, when you say disciple, what does that literally mean? A follower. Therefore, anybody who follows a teacher, or in this case, Jesus, is his disciple. Remember that during that time, hundreds were following Jesus. At this point, they have been following. That's why they were looking like, when did you get here? We're looking for you. But he crossed the sea early in the morning. And therefore, when they heard that, all of those following him, all the disciples quarreled among themselves. They were asking themselves, what does he mean by we will eat his flesh? Okay? That's just unimaginable. And yet, even though they questioned that, Jesus continued and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him on the last day. Very clear in the teachings of Jesus in the Gospel of St. John. That's chapter 6 verse 53. And when they could not still believe, Jesus even had to underline. What do I mean by that? In the next verse, he says, For my flesh is, added, he adds a word, true food. It's like saying, you still do not believe? Okay, let me push it further. <laughs> okay? That my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. That's why even in chapter 6 of the Gospel of St. John, Jesus himself is already talking about real presence. Fast forward, will, will, where will it happen and when will it happen? Our Gospel today. Last Supper. Fast forward. When Jesus now, which is our Gospel today, gathers with his disciples on the night before he suffered, we did, what did he say? He took the bread and said, This is my body. This is my blood. Very clear in the Last Supper. That's why belief in the real presence of Christ goes back to the very time of Jesus. He himself is teaching about it. That he is truly present in the bread and the wine. And that has been handed on from the time of Jesus up to the present. Go to, the, to Paul the Apostle. To St. Paul. Go to his teachings. A good example is in the first, his, his first letter to the Corinthians. He says to the Corinthians, I praise you and I thank you for always remembering the tradition I have handed on to you, and then he says, listen to this, a tradition that I receive from the Lord himself. And what is the tradition? He says that on that night, he said, this is my body. This is my blood. Every century, you can see commentaries on the real presence of Christ. Dating back. Going back to the very teaching of Jesus Christ. In that letter of St. Paul from the first, his first letter to the Corinthians, around 4th century, a certain bishop by the name Bishop Theodore was commenting and saying, In the Last Supper, as St. Paul said, Jesus said, This is my body. And then the bishop says, He did not say, This is the symbol of my body. This is the symbol of my blood. Bishop Theodore says, he says, this is my body, this is my blood. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, 
every time we celebrate the Eucharist, the bread and the wine are turned into the real body and blood of Christ. That's why we call it in theology as transubstantiation. Of course, trans means transfer, right? To transfer. Substance, do you still remember our philosophy? Father, on a Sunday morning, we're doing philosophy. Bible itself is already difficult. Remember in philosophy, everything, like everything, has substance and accidents. Okay. Like for example, this microphone. What are the accidents? The color. What's the color? Black and gray. What else? The shape. What else? The weight. All of those are accidents. Right? Accidents. That's why if you look at another microphone, the accidents are different. Sometimes it can be pink. <laughs> but they are still microphone because they are only accidents. What's under substance, that's why it's called substance, substance stands under the accidents. Those that you cannot see, those are what makes it microphone. You may deep change the accidents, but it's still microphone. In transubstantiation, it's the other way around. The accidents remain, the substance is changed. What do I mean by that? What's the color of the host? White. Sometimes brownish if you use wheat, right? What's the, what's the shape? Round, right? After we celebrate the Mass, we do the consecration. Do the accidents change? Is the color changed? Shape changed? Okay. Uh, the weight perhaps changed? No. The accidents remain, but the substance is changed. It is not bread anymore. It is the real body of Christ. I know some of us love really traveling just looking at miracles. My dear brothers and sisters, the greatest miracle happens every time you attend the Mass. That the bread and the wine are turned into the real body and blood of Christ. You might be saying, oh, come on, Father. <laughs> be careful. Why? Because all throughout history, we already have miracles of the Eucharist. And the most popular one, I'm sure you have heard it already from Father, is the miracle of Lanciano in Italy. Around the year 700, 8th century, when there was a Basilian priest who was celebrating Mass, or monk, as he was celebrating the Mass, he was doubting, is this bread really turning real body of Christ? Is this wine really real blood? What happened? As he raised the bread, it turned into real flesh. As he raised the cup, the wine turned into real blood. And it has been subjected to many scientific tests. The last one, 1970, 1971, when they subjected to test the flesh and the blood. What's the result all throughout the, the history? The same result. And what is that? The flesh is human flesh. The blood is human blood. The flesh comes from the myocardial muscle of the heart, which is very meaningful. Huh? Of all the parts of the body, it's still the heart, the myocardial. Okay? How about the blood? What type? What's your blood type? Come on. In order to open your eyes. <laughs> What's your blood type? I'm O. What blood type do you think they found in Lanciano? A, B. Which is very meaningful. Who's AB here? <laughs> Which is very meaningful. Why meaningful? Remember Shroud of Turin? What's that, Father? Remember the Shroud of Turin when they discovered a cloth that was the face of a man and believed to be the face of Jesus when he was carrying the cross to Calvary? Remember Saint Veronica? Wiped the face of Jesus and this face marked the, the cloth with his face. When that shroud of Turin was tested, blood AB. That's why that's one of the reasons why they are saying that the shroud of Turin is very convincingly to be the one used by Veronica. Because it coincided, it's the same blood type 
found in the miracle in Lansian. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, our eyes may not see it. Accidents don't change, but the substance is changed. As I was telling you, of course, last Sunday, in our doctrine and teaching on the Blessed Trinity, remember, we might not completely comprehend it with our human mind because it is a mystery. But why do we believe? Jesus said so. He is my Lord. And what's the analogy I always give? I hope you still remember. A lot of you smiled. When we were younger, when mom says, come inside the house, it's getting dark, there's Tau Tau Mona, we all run inside the house. We never saw the Tau Tau Mona, but mom said, there's Tau Tau Mona outside. I believe her. <laughs> it's your mom compared it to the Lord talking. If you truly believe in Jesus as your Lord, then when he says this, even though I might not completely comprehend it, I do believe because he is my Lord. Do you believe in Jesus as the Lord? Then believe that in the sacrament of the Eucharist, the bread and the wine truly become his body and his blood. Thank you for partaking of the Word of God, the food for our souls, and being part of spreading the good news and nourishing others. May God bless and protect you.